Hello, I'm Atuba George and I bless God for this new week and a great opportunity to bring God's truth to you. And I, I just want to bless God for your life. Listen, I know God is doing something in you and you are going to continue to see the manifestation of His Word in your life. If you are sick in your body, it's time to be healed. Praise God. So, so release your faith right now. Even as the word of God comes to you, it will bring healing. It will bring health. It will bring financial prosperity. It will just bring everything that you need. Praise God. You know, John said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers now that's the same wish that i have for you and that's why i take out this time to bring god's word to you because there is no other way to prosper in god but through the understanding of his word thank you lord jesus so so we we continue today on uh, the, the book of 1 Corinthians and we are in chapter 12. Can we just pray? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for this great opportunity, Lord, to minister by your spirit, Lord. Thank you for everyone watching and listening right now. Indeed, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed by the anointing of God's spirit. Even as your word comes forth, Lord, liberation is taking place in the hearts of many. And eyes have been opened to your truth. And above all, they will hear your voice. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. So, we are continuing our first Corinthians. And we are in chapter 12. If you have your Bibles there, turn it with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, I love, I love this chapter. Praise God. We, we are entering the, you know, when, when you're doing something, the end, the Bible says better is the end thereof of a thing than the beginning. So we are getting towards the end of 1 Corinthians and it gets hotter. Praise God. This is the core of the story this is the core of the letter now let's go from verse 1 chapter 12 are you there all right he said now concerning spiritual gifts brethren now i want you to notice something if you are reading from the king james bible and i i don't know if the old king if the new king james is the same but if you're reading the, the old king james bible and then you are reading the printed edition you know, sometimes the electronic version, you may not see this thing. Some of them, you will see it sometimes. So. Now, if you're reading your, your Bible like I am reading my Bible, now that's why, see, electronic Bibles, they are handy. They are wonderful. It's good to have them. You, with one, one device, you can have all the translations of the Bible. That wonderful. But you see, it's still important you have a hard copy of the Bible. And when you do your study, you use them because there are some things. For example, I'm going to show you something here that most electronic versions may have missed. Now it says, now concerning spiritual gifts. Now look at the word gifts in your Bible. If you have, like, I've, like I'm saying, the printed edition. You will notice that the word gifts is in italics. See? Now when you see a word in the Bible that is written in italics, they, the translators say it is because they were not sure in, in, the, in the original translation or in the original form before it was translated, something was looked like it was missing there. So they tried to look for what will suit it and then the translators put it there. Now that's why it's written in italics. Now why is it written in italics? Now you that is the reader, because see, we, we don't read the Bible by um, just human comprehension we read the bible by the holy spirit now what do i mean by that does that does that mean you don't use your brain no you use your brain but you see it is the holy spirit that gives the interpretation of the scriptures so when you are connected with the holy spirit he's the one that will tell you hey this is what i meant this is what this meant this is because he was in the heart of the writer he was in the heart of paul when paul was writing this letter so he can tell you what paul was thinking Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Now he says, 
The, I said the gift there is in italics. Now, what do you do when you see a word in italics? You take it away and read the scripture and see if it's going to make sense to you. And then you put it back and read. Now, in this particular case, we take it out. And then it goes, now concerning spiritual brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now you may say, mm, does it really, really make sense? Hey, hey, okay. What if we add something else and say, now concerning the spiritual. Now, the reason is because the word gifts narrows your thinking when you begin to read the whole chapter. Because of that word gifts, it narrows your thinking. So you find teachings and, and preachers teach and say there are nine gifts of the Spirit. Who said there are nine gifts of the Spirit? Paul never said there are nine gifts of the Spirit. So, so because you see the word gifts, now you can, you, you, you can relate with something. You, you, you're thinking of giving you know, someone gave you a gift. So you're like, oh, he gave me this gift. But now let's take away the gifts and, and put something else there before the spiritual so, so to make it make sense. Now I'm putting my own italic word now. Praise God. I'm taking the one the translators put. Now, now someone say, hey, but, but the Bible say anybody that shall take away. Okay, that's this. This is not what he was talking about. John was speaking about the prophecy he received from the Holy Ghost. He wasn't talking about the whole Bible. See, so am I tampering with the scriptures? No, I'm not. Listen, I'm saying take the word gift out and introduce the word the that means T H E just before the word spiritual. So we go now concerning the spiritual brethren. I would not have you ignorant. Now that makes it more broad. That that makes your mind open and it, because he's he's delving into the core of Christianity. There is no Christianity without the spiritual. You know, you know, Paul was writing to Timothy and he spoke of certain people. He says, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And he told Timothy, from this kind of people, flee. So now he's been talking about several things from the beginning. And now he gets to the point where he says, all right, guys, consigning the spiritual... I don't want you to be ignorant. Okay. All right then. So he says, he goes, says, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Now you see why he's bringing this up. He said, before now, you were rude or you were, you were, you were, you were Gentiles carried away by these dumb idols. Now, why, why is he relating this with dumb idols? You know what he's talking about. In your village, there is, you know, you know, there are people who, where they come from, they say, oh, nobody builds a story building. Because if you try to build a story building, you will offend the gods and then you will die. And then even, even believers, uh, just say, look, let's, let's just build you know, a, a bungalow and that is fine. There are people like that. Now, that's a place where a demon spirit is holding everyone captive. So, and, and being led now, and he just, you know, there are, there are places, you hear all kinds of things. All kinds of things. You know, growing up, you hear those stories that you, you there are places, there are, there's a particular village you go to, you never ask for pillow. You don't ever ask for pillow because if you venture ask for pillow in the middle of the night, a python is going to come and coil itself. Now, those are meats. Or those are stories, wherever those stories came from. But you know there are some, some of these things that, that people really experience. So Paul is saying that, hey, you were led by these dumb idols before now. Now I'm going to talk to you about the realm of the spirit. Praise God. Because there's the realm of the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now he says, wherefore I give you to understand. This is the basic principles of how he operates with us. He said, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a cost. Right? And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord 
but by the Holy Ghost. Praise God. What's he saying? Nobody speaking by the Spirit of God is going to curse Jesus. No, it's impossible. So, so you, you see, now why is he saying this? He just told you that you were led by some of these dumb idols. Sometimes you find believers who cannot differentiate between the, the, the work of the Holy Spirit and the work of a demon. Now someone is speaking, prophesying, for example, and you can tell if he is prophesying by the Spirit of God or he's prophesying by a demon spirit. Many people don't know how to differentiate it. They think they know, but many people are being led by demons and they think they are prophets. Or, oh, somebody say he saw a vision concerning me. Now that also, I need to let you know this, that also doesn't mean that, you know, sometimes say, oh, um, somebody is not a Christian, so he, he cannot tell you. He say, if somebody, he say, ah, this one, he's not even born again, but he used to dream dreams. And whenever he dreams dreams, the thing used to come to pass. This is how you know. Anyone who's filled with the Holy Ghost will not curse the name of Jesus. He will not curse the name of Jesus. Now that's big. That in itself is big. The same way it says, no man can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Now, is he saying no man can open his mouth and speak? You know, Jesus is Lord. Anybody can say that. Anybody can open their mouth and speak. You know, and, 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 and just say Jesus is Lord. But he's talking about something deeper. He's not talking about opening your mouth to speak. He's saying no man can say. Now I think I've told you this before. We don't speak with our, we speak with our mouth and then we say with our hearts. Now that's, that's deep. When you want to speak, you speak with your mouth. But when you want to say something, you say with your heart. So sometimes you find people who are saying something different from what they are speaking. In the faith movement, you, you know, the, the people who want to say, oh, I, I belong to the faith movement, you see this a lot sometimes, this contradiction. What they are speaking with their mouth is different from what they are saying with their heart. For example, somebody says, please give me some money because I am very rich right now. Now what's he saying? He is speaking, I am very rich right now. But he is saying, I am broke right now. So when he says no man can say that Jesus is Lord, he's talking about the one nobody will realize because you say by realization. You say by revelation. Sometimes you read in scriptures, it says, it says then he said, you see, now something happened that made him to say. See? Now when he says then he said, for example, when Peter was brought out of prison, you know, he got the angel led him out to the city, to the main street of the city. And the Bible said, and then he said, that's when he realized it. So when he opened his mouth to speak, he was speaking what he just realized to be true. That an angel has come to rescue him. It dawned on him. And when things dawn on you like that, it becomes your way or pattern of reasoning. That's what it means to say something. So sometimes we use the words interchangeably, but we don't understand that there's a big difference between speaking and saying. And that's why many times a lot of people don't get results because they are not saying anything. They are speaking, but they are not saying anything. Praise God. I've got to stop here today. But we're going to continue from here tomorrow. But take home this. You need to know what you are saying. And that's the most powerful thing. And he says, no man can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Father, I bless you for today. As they go about their businesses, Father, I ask that you go before them as you have promised and make every crooked path straight. And let them walk on straight paths today and find treasures in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>